Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And uh, we're going to be looking at some more free agent stuff today. We've been doing trade stuff, free agent stuff, of course, because of free agency. But it's over. What's not over, though? There's tons of players out there still available. We just did a Cadre one. Go check out that. That brought up a lot of conversation, I'll tell you that. Um, same as to, when we predicted Dabrinka going to Ottawa. At least that was our second team. We predicted Forsberg going back to Nashville. That was also the second team that we thought that they may go to. Um, we did a lot. We hit a lot of these very well. And that's why we do them. Because we seem to be able to hit them not bad. Today... We're going to be looking at a character, a player who is a character, that everybody has a different opinion of, it seems. And I think he, got, he gets a bad rap from the media. He pisses off often. And I like the fact that he pisses off the media because they deserve to be pissed off. And that is Phil the Thrill Kessel. We're going to be looking at his, uh, his numbers, his age how much he might cost. And we're going to look at six teams that may decide they want to work with Phil Kessel. Um, first of all, before we go on there, I'll give you my lean on Phil Kessel, as I've already given you a little bit. I think he's got a bad rap. I love Phil Kessel. I love Tim in Toronto when he's stuck up for guys like Phaneuf and his captain and uh, in the media and said what was on his mind and told them basically to stick it in their hat. And... A lot of people did it, obviously. And, of course, those writers then talked a lot of crap about Phil Kessel. And guess what? People believe what these writers say. I don't. Uh, he, went, he then got traded to Pittsburgh and won two cups. <laughs> right away. I loved it. Shove it down their throats. And he did, too. He said some stuff that was like, you know, kind of passive aggressively just kind of said yeah that's uh too bad i got traded from toronto there yeah it's too bad they did that right yeah and he had a little it seemed like he had a bit of a thing going on with milk and wasn't going on very well there but to tell you the honest truth if i were to take a player that had an attitude i would not take phil kessel over Malkin. Malkin to me has got one of the biggest attitudes in the league and uh, so if Phil Kessel didn't like him or they didn't like each other, I don't blame him. Now, does Phil Kessel have an opinion? Is he a kind of guy that speaks out? Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't mind that at all. But he went to Arizona after that, and a lot of people said, oh, you know, what's going to happen in Arizona? He's not going to be happy there. Like, he wasn't happy in Pittsburgh, which wasn't true. He was happy as hell in Pittsburgh, and he actually – Loves the city of Toronto. We're going to talk about that a little later. But he went to Arizona, and you heard some great things from Armstrong about how great he was in the room in Arizona. Uh, he kept on working, was a total professional, even though they were clearly rebuilding. Um, he did say that you know he would prefer probably to move on instead of going through a rebuild as his age, which is perfectly reasonable. But he worked. Uh, Armstrong said he worked his ass off, and the coaching staff said he worked his ass off every day. He was great for the young players to have a great attitude, all that kind of stuff. And I heard that everywhere. In fact, Brian Burke, who was the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, said that if Kessel Kessel's biggest flaw was he didn't care what fans or media thought. He cared about the people in the room an awful lot, but he didn't give a rat's ass what anybody else thought. Kessel is rock and roll, man. It's freaking, that's, that's rock and roll right there. I care about the people that I should care about. I don't care about the people I don't, and he does what he wants. Now, there are some detractions to Kessel. Every, I've heard this from several places where he does not work out in the off season at all. He does fishing and hangs out on the you know, raft or whatever. He doesn't work out at all. This isn't just from one. He hasn't denied this or anything, but he doesn't care what people think, so he's not going to try to deny it anyways. However, the guy's a freak in nature. I don't think he, he, he isn't. He, he's on a uh, games played. Uh, he's going to probably break Yandel's record for amount of games without a injury 
amount of games played. Iron Man is what I'm trying to say. Doesn't work out anything. It's just a freak of nature. That's all. So you just, uh, we'll, we'll get into that as we get into some of the teams that may be looking at them. All right. Let's start with Phil himself, Phil the Thrill. I love that, Phil, Phil the Thrill. I don't know where he got that from. He's from Madison, Wisconsin. Okay, not far from Minnesota. He's 34 years old. Uh, by the way, one of the things before as we look at these teams, Madison's not far from Minnesota. He had the opportunity to go to Minnesota. They had a trade all worked out, and he turned it down. So going home for him is not high on his list of things to do. Just thought I'd throw that out there. He's 34. Um, one of the myths I have of Phil Kessel is that he's, you know, diabolically bad defensively. Now, he's not great defensively, but he's not like Patrick Kane level bad defensively. Patrick Kane is probably the worst player in the league defensively. I would, I would have to imagine. He's terrible. He's not that bad. He's below average. That's all he is. He's not diabolically bad. Um, he does come back in the zone, um, but most of all, he's, he's an offensive player, so he takes risks in the offensive to go, to go on to the offense, no doubt about it. Had 52 points in 82 games. You're going to say, look at this minus 24. Again, I'm not, I'm more into uh, modern analytics than I am plus minus. Plus minus is dinosaur. I don't pay attention to it much anymore. A minus, I mean, it does can tell you something. But everybody was poor on the plus minus for Arizona. But his expected goals against were really good. Were not good, but I mean good for his offense, I mean. So he is a productive player. He provides productions. He only got eight goals. That's because he was playing on a lines that had no passers. He basically had to create all the offense himself. So if he were in a better situation, I think he could even have better numbers than he has here, even at 34 years old. He's still got a killer shot, and he's a great playmaker. So let's look at some teams. The first team was not a team I had on the list, actually. Um, but I've just heard it from Elliot Friedman and you know a whole bunch of guys that they're interested. So I thought I would throw it in here. They're not my highest team. Um, of course, because I don't think it's something that would happen, but maybe. We'll look at why their Buffalo Sabres have been on the list of, going to, of being a team that would take Phil Kessel. First of all, I've already mentioned that he was a big fan of Toronto. He loved living there. He loved the city. And, of course, Buffalo isn't far from Toronto. It's highly unlikely he's going back to Toronto. So, in this way, he could be just a hop, skip, and a jump over to Toronto whenever he feels like it. And maybe he just likes the city of Buffalo. Um, it's very possible. Another thing that could draw Phil Kessel here is that they are an up-and-coming team. Um, they improved in leaps and bounds, and bounds last year. And there's a very good chance that they're going to improve again. They have guys like Peyton Krebs. Tage Thompson had a killer year last year. He probably is going to keep that up. Um, Alex Tuck had a great year considering he just went to Buffalo and I imagine he, he's so fast, so big, so strong such a great pickup by them when they traded Eichel um, and they have of course this great young defense of Darlene Power, Yoki Haru, Samuelson just fantastic top four there so you know if they can convince them that they're closer than maybe uh, most people may think they are and I think they could be very much so. They're being built very well, and they improved so much last year that they could prove incredible a lot this year as well. Um, goaltending could be something that he may look at and go, you know, like Eric Comrie, Craig Anderson, neither one of them have been there before. But he might be able to sold on the proximity to Toronto, and he would fit in here. I wouldn't play Victor Ol I wouldn't want to play Victor Olsen up on the top line, to tell you the honest truth. He doesn't seem to be able to play. He's not great five on five. He's a power play specialist mostly. So Phil Kessel could go in there and be feeding to Tage Thompson and Skinner. 
And also with those two, there's more skill on that line than he's used to playing with. He would probably get a few more goals playing with them as well. Not to mention, like I said, he lives for the guys in the room. He can bring a great attitude to this team. And this team has been looking for that over and over and over again. Even the pick, I mean, after all the nonsense that's gone on for the last nine years, changing the attitude and the energy has been big for them. And they brought in a lot of guys that are known for doing that, including the aforementioned Eric Comrie. Eric Comrie is one of the funniest guys you're ever going to meet. Um, he, he'll keep you, on your, keep you in stitches. And Kessel, from what I understand, is, is much the same way. So I could at least see the Buffalo interest. I'm not sure I see the Kessel interest. But sub yourself up, Buffalo Sabres fans or all fans. Tell me what you think about Phil Kessel going to the Buffalo Sabres. And I'm Ducks. Okay. I have this as the second most like or second least likely, but still on the list. And the most reason why I have it there is it's first of all, it's a sunny place. He's used to be in Arizona, I don't, although I don't know if that's hugely matters to him. Um, second is he can fit in their top six. They could play Maxim Comtois down the lineup, but but Trano, Strom, and he could make up a darn good line. Or he, they could even play him on the top line uh, with, uh, you know, try him on the left side maybe, although he usually plays right wing. But I think given the opportunity to feed to Troy Terry, it would be huge. I mean, Troy Terry came out big time last year. And maybe even try Troy Terry on the left side, but, you know, it seems you probably don't want to mix that up. But this is a team that could really use his presence, really use a guy that's won a couple of cups, that, uh, you know, has been around the block and fights for his teammates. Because I kind of got the impression sometimes in Anaheim where that that wasn't the case in the room there, that they really needed to learn to fight for each other. And Phil Kessa would bring that in a big way. Now, one of the biggest problems here with this possibility of this happening is, again, he's not a guy that exercises and stuff like that on off season or anything. And Dallas Eakins will not, I don't think could stand for that. He does, he, he is a workout nut himself and he instills a huge workout culture in his room you may be a lot of things but you ain't going to be out of shape that's for sure or close to it he believes in peak physical condition for every single person that plays for his team and if you're not he doesn't care how good you are you're gone that's basically one of the reasons why i wouldn't put Jeff Hassel in here now as i said with buffalo oh, i didn't mention it with buffalo but i should mention it here that with that in mind, you can send a narrative to your players like, look, this guy's a freak in nature. Don't follow him in this way. But there's a lot of other ways that you can learn from Phil. And fighting for his teammates, and I don't mean like fist fighting for your teammates. I'm talking about sticking up for your teammates, like he did as a captain in Toronto to the media and stuff like that, and backing them and all of those sort of things like that. He could teach you a lot there. I don't know if the room would be too happy with him being able to get away with not working out, though. So tell me what you think, Ducks fans. Would you like a guy like Phil Kessel in your room? I almost forgot who I was talking about. Go comment, Sub yourself up. Comment in the comment section. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. Okay, Seattle. Next. Again, this pick, this isn't one of my favorite places for him to go, or most likely, I should say. But this is also an attitude pickup. Phil Kessel, if they can't, if he can't find a place that's going to be like cup ready this year, he may have to go with the team. And this was where Buffalo and Anaheim could come in to as possibilities as well. That at the deadline, they can trade him to a contender. And Seattle, I think, is doing this a lot. Andre Burakovsky, they're giving. Andre Burakovsky got, what, a four-year deal? Four or five-year deal? 2002, 23. Five-year deal. And 
I don't think anybody was going to give him that kind of a deal. So why did Seattle give him that kind of a deal? There was probably people in the three, four-year range. They gave him an extra year at 5.5. Why? There's no no no-trade clause. Actually, I think he has a 10-team. But you can trade this contract. Uh, Jared McCann as well. All of the contracts that he's picked up, all the free agent pick contracts that he's picked up, there is an option to trade them down the road. Larson, Alexiak, they gave them more term for the possibility so they could come. And if they do happen to get traded, they got an extra one year or two, you know, for to make up for the fact like that. You have to go through the inconvenience of moving your family somewhere else. But you have the security of having those extra years. And I think that's what he's doing a lot here. And I think they could do the same for Phil Kessel. They could give Phil Kessel a two-year deal or something like that. Um, They have cap space. Not loads and loads. But, I mean, if you're just going to go a one- or two-year deal, they got $9 million in cap space. If you're just going to go a one- or two-year deal with Phil Kessel, um, it's not going to kill a team like Seattle too much. And for all the reasons I already mentioned, his fight for people in the room. He has a cup attitude. He's won two cups. He knows what it takes to win. A lot of these, you know, they got a lot of young players where Phil Kessel can rub off on them a lot. The thing you don't want them to do is his conditioning. <laughs> uh practices in the off season. But if you can say, look, you know, do Phil Kessel here and forget about this part. Uh, but but we li- we want to see this. We want to see a guy a, a teammates that live and fight for the guys in the room one way or another, whether it's verbal, whether it's you know, helping them out at when in the off season, all of those sort of things like that. So I think Phil Kessel could fit in here. Not only that, he's a name that'll bring seats in Seattle as well. And uh, they seem to be kind of not opposed to doing stuff like that, like Giordano and, you know, bringing people to the seats is a good thing. Tell me what you think, Seattle fans. How would you like Phil Kessel there? He can feed guys, shooters. He's a great playmaker. Um... I know he had 50, he only, you know, he didn't have the greatest point production last year, but he would have a lot more production. He could feed Burakovsky all day. He'd be great for a guy like Burakovsky, to tell you the honest truth. Throw Burakovsky on the left side and let, uh, let Kessel feed him all, feed him and see how, see how he does, bring, how he brings his production up. The more I think about it, the more I don't mind this. You know, I think he can fit in a lot of places here. Tell me what you think. Sub up to my channel, Seattle fans, to YouTube channel. Comment in the comment section, and we'll talk about it. Calgary Flames. Now, he did play in Toronto, and he loved it there. So it's not like he's totally opposed to going to Canada. On the surface, it would seem that Calgary, you know, they lost Goudreau, which could be difficult for him to go to Calgary. But... Losing Goudreau gave them a lot of extra cap space. And I'm sure Calgary's going to be looking on the open market to improve this year. Problem is, they got a little issue with Matthew Kachuk, who hasn't signed yet. And I don't think they want to be signed in too many long-term contracts. Because if Matthew Kachuk does decide he's moving on, this team's rebuilding. And there's no use bringing in a guy like Kadri and giving him a no-movement clause and all that kind of stuff like that where you're going to decrease the value of your asset if Matthew Kachuk's going to walk anyways. But if you could bring in a Phil Kessel right now to fill in the gap on the right side there where Coleman is, and Coleman can drop down and play left side with Rooney and Dubé, where, which is a much better third line than having Lucic in there, depending on how Walker Dewar does in his first chance in the NHL. It brings a lot more depth. He's a great passer. He'd be great for Mangio Pani, I think. You could even put Toffoli in that spot with Backlund and throw Kessel right up there in the top line. Uh, feed in Kachuk and Lindholm all day. That's one way you could bring him in, you know. And if things don't work out, you sign him to a one-year deal at the deadline, move him to a contender. But it's, it's kind of that tweener play that gives you a chance to still be good. But work on what's going on with Matthew Kachuk and not having to overly commit to a player 
In fact, I don't think you're going to be able to get a big name player in Calgary until you know what's going on with Matthew Kachuk. Because I don't think a big name player is going to go there. His their stipulation is you got to sign Kachuk and then I'll go there. So, but a guy like Phil Kessel may give it a shot, especially if a lot of the other places are not, you know, a lot of the other contending teams out there can't find a spot for him and all of that. He could do good for you. He could do a lot better point production wise than he did in Arizona, which wasn't that bad, actually. All right. Nashville Predators are next. And I like this play for the Nashville Predators because Kessel just feels like Nashville to me. They got so many character guys here, like Duchesne and Torvenin, uh, Johnson, Tanner Juneau. And they build, they love having a deep team. They don't have superstars, they have a deep, hardworking, come to play every day type team. And you're going to say, well, Phil Kessel's not that. Not according to the people in Arizona. People in Arizona said Phil came to play every single day. And he backed his team constantly all the time. So I think he'd be perfect for here. He's that quirky type of personality that I think Nashville fans would love as well. Um, he can pop the puck. He can pass the puck. He can easily fit into the right side on either with Granlin or with uh, even down there with Janot and Sissons he could play. He can play all over the lineup on the right-hand side, and he doesn't complain at all. I don't know. I just have a feeling for three or three million a year for two years, or three and a half million for two years, or something of that nature, this would be a guy that would be perfect for the Nashville Predators to fill that lineup up. Because the way they want to win, it seems like, is they want to beat you with their third and fourth lines. And they've got a third line that can beat most people's third line. And if you brought in Kessel to play with, uh, I don't think Glass is going to be there, but uh, with Sissons and Janot, and you bring McCarron down to Sanford and Trennan, there's not too many teams that are going to beat that bottom bottom nine. That he he could he could really do some damage in that spot against the other team's third and fourth lines when he's on there. So I, I love it. I think it would be a great move for Nashville. It's one of my favorite places for him to go. Um, he doesn't seem to be like, he does. He seems to be all over the place about where he will go. He, he went all the way to Arizona. Nashville's not that far away. I like it. All right. Tell me what you think, Nashville fans. I'll send this out to you. Sub yourself up, comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about Phil Kessel going to the Nashville Predators. And my final destination is the Colorado Avalanche. That's right, Colorado Avalanche. Doesn't look like they're going to sign Kadri. Uh, they've got a lot of contracts coming up. I know everybody in the land is saying that right now. we got too many contracts coming up. We can't have Phil Kessel. Uh, what do you have for cap space? What, $3.9 million? And there can be things that are done to free up some cap space if you need it. But if Kessel wants a cup, another cup, I could see him coming here for one year for $3 million. Why not? If he really wants a cup, and if I'm the Colorado Avalanche, he's your new Burakoski. He's basically the same as Burakoski, except that he's got cups on his shelf at home. You know? No, they already won. Everybody has cups now because they won a cup last year. Well, what's wrong with having more? And what's wrong with having a guy that fights the way he does? He's, he's about as good defensively as Burakoski was, which isn't that great. But everybody else on this team is great defensively. He brings a killer amount of offense. He's a wonderful playmaker. He could definitely help out any first shooters out there. He could help out a guy like Newhook, for instance. He could move O'Connor over to the left side, play him with Newhook. Well, he, well either that or bring Lekkonen down and play him up with Newhook and Landeskog. I mean, he would add a new flavor to this team that I think would work perfect. Um, 
and wouldn't even cost that much. And it would only be for probably one year. So you're not committed to him. If you want to sign him again next year, great. If he wins a cup, I'm sure he's going to be very happy. And maybe he wants to stick around, but it's not, ne not a necessity. And we don't know how long Phil Kessel wants to play for. It could be time to start fishing for, a, for the rest of his life because he loves the fishing, don't you know? So what do you think, Colorado fans? Phil Kessel, I love it. That's my number one team that he could go to. Do you guys have any other ones, that, other teams that you think he may go to that I haven't put in here? Do you like him going to the teams that I selected? Do you even like Phil Kessel? Comment in the comment section. Let me know. I'll chat with you because I love chat, chat and hockey. Have a great day, everybody. That's my full 42. Okay, bye.